Hello and welcome to Where's the Bandwagon. My name is Will and sat alongside me is Ty. Hello. Dude. And we're going to be talking movies and sports and games and pop culture as we try and find the bandwagon. Uh, as, as always, subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube channel and give us a rating if you enjoy it. So hopefully we can reach out to more people. Now today is the second of our match report series. <laughs> Last night, Arsenal faced Villarreal in the uh, first leg of the semi-final of the Europa League. And we're going to be doing a quick breakdown of the match. And this is Actually, you're an Arsenal supporter, Arsenal supporter, so kind of yeah, got a, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> in this case. So we're going to get your thoughts on some of the uh, major events of the match and just talk to talk through, uh, say some of the major points and talking points uh, after the match. So, first of all, is there anything you want to say? Get off your chest before we start bringing down into specific items. Um, I think overall Arsenal played terrible. Um. There was just no creativity. I mean, that could be lack of a striker, but overall I didn't think we played that well. Defending the whole game was a shambles. Villarreal should have scored more, actually, but yeah, I'm but thankful that they didn't. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> Villarreal really did surprise a lot of people, I think. We're just coming in the amount of you know, creativity and that early, early goal. We're just watching it now, five minutes or four minutes and 30 seconds into the match. Uh, Villarreal break into the box, um, Managed yeah. to get past a couple of defenders and it's just it's smashed just, straight into the left hand corner. It's just shocking defend. I mean, Xhaka doesn't play left back. Uh, I don't think he didn't play left back last night, did he? he started in midfield, but he, his role was to push back into the left back position, and he got exposed there by Chukwueze. I would have thought that you know we would have gone with Cedric at left back. You know, you know, just for that. You know, a full back playing in that position, even if he's a right back playing at a left back, he would he would defend better than that. It's just it's just a shambles looking at his first goal. Do you <laughs> do you think because the, the goal is kind of like the ball pops up? It's great work by uh, by real uh, by Villarreal, but the ball just pop up and it's smashed straight into the corner. Do you think this early goal changed the mentality of Arsenal, or do you think that shouldn't matter, especially <sighs> in a semi final? I mean, this is just classic Arsenal this season. We go away, we play slow. We start very slow, and then we'll wait for another go- for a goal to go, and nothing will change, and nothing changed, nothing changed until half time. Yeah, well, we'd, I would, <laughs> before half time, there was a second goal. We're just looking at it here, Parejo with um, the oh, corner. This goal, bro. Free header in the middle of the six yard box, and then where is the centre box, bro? In uh, the far post. So yeah, <laughs> watching the replays of this, Ty is not looking happy. Oh my god, just. Look at our centre backs. Look at the position of them. Mari's nowhere near. Why is he so deep into the six yard box? Holden is not even getting off of the ground, and Villarreal players just got free header. He's, Easiest goal they've scored. He's the only season. one jumping. Yeah. <laughs> and he should have scored. Like, there's a free header yeah. in the six yard box, and it's lucky that there was someone at the back post to save what we can only assume yeah. was a wayward. Uh, that first guy should have. Yeah, you're right. That first guy should have scored. The guy that got his head onto the ball should have scored that, but. Even still, party went to sleep at the back post then. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's it. look. When we're looking at these, this goal from multiple replay angles, it looks more and more ridiculous each time you see it. That Every a, single time. A, just, a, a European just, Super League Big Six team could let <laughs> something like that happen. <laughs> I mean, with a performance like that last night, we deserve to be in the European Super League. <laughs> you know, at least then there's no relegation. <laughs> It was constant. Well, the moment it would just be season. you, Real Madrid, Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> I think there might be a thrashing every week at, or midweek game on that account. Uh, we were going to look at all the goals, but before that, it was 2-0 down to Villarreal and the worst possible thing could happen, um, behind probably going 3-0 down, uh, is that you had your chance for your, uh, your team to be lifted up. Pepe uh, receives a ball over the top, gets tripped <laughs> in the penalty area, and it ref gives it a penalty, however, on further inspection and after debate from the Villarreal players who look quite calm, they look like they know that it's going to be given a handball. Look at the replay. Yeah, definitely it's definitely a on. handball. No, no definitely question on that. A it, like, it helped him control that. So. Yeah. Again, but it's not... This, if we could have... I guess it is a handball, but if, you know, if it didn't go that way, I think this would have changed... Mm. Maybe change the momentum a bit. Of course, and it maybe would have. Yeah. We would have got back into the game because I've seen it before. You know, we two 0 down. Yeah. Against West Ham, we were three 0 down at half time. Came back three three, and that was literally just one goal changed the way that Arsenal plays. It's just exactly. It's a team that lacks confidence at the moment, and 
scoring a goal gives them so much confidence in a match and if they don't get that then yeah well at this point in the match it was only 35 minutes in so a goal to make it 2-1 is is very very open match uh, continuing on from that uh, I've just said the worst thing could happen is a penalty be disallowed but I think the worst possible thing that could happen if you're 2-0 down is actually get a player sent off uh, <laughs> Tali Caballos who um, ha- received a yellow card at the end of the first half um, oh sorry we're just looking at a, a couple of more challenges that Villarreal had but Danis Caballos who was given a yellow card um, at the end of the first the half, half then gets a second yellow card at the start of the second half we're just looking at it here it's an overpass by Nicola Pepe and he just lunges in to try and receive it and fouls him and what would you think of that I think that I honestly think the second I get why it was the second year but I think it was soft from from the referee as well it's like there was no intent in attack he was just running he was just trying to get the ball he wasn't stretched out or anything overreaching trying to get he was literally just running trying to he's take over, the ball he's just overreaching this in the in the in the tackle oh no sorry no, that's a Villarreal player yeah yeah he's not overreaching he's literally that... just striding it's a ve- look that was literally where his foot was going to land mm. is... so it was just he was just it was just I I thought it was a soft second yellow you know? is that a yellow card if is that a first yellow card if he doesn't have no one? it's, it's a foul mm-hmm. no denying it's a foul but it's not a yellow card it's not it's... fair enough uh, so yeah Arsenal go down to 10 men let it down the line um, Villarreal also go down to 10 men but before that a uh, penalty is awarded to Arsenal after uh, a dizzying run in the <laughs> dizzying run in the penalty area and Nicky I mean, Pepe I'm, uh, I'm sure like Villarreal fans would argue that that was a dive as well you know he, he dangled his foot there because I left foot yeah there, there is contact <laughs> yeah, there is contact but, so you know they're given you know there's yeah. no there's yeah. no way that isn't given but you're right. If if this if Saka if he's running without focusing on trying to get a penalty, his foot he usually wouldn't it. be there. Yeah. But yeah. the penalty, Nick Pepe, uh, interesting. He smashes it straight down the middle, uh, which is got you know risky it. one, got but you've got it. a little bit of got confidence in that one, you could say. And then finally, we're just talking about uh, the second yellow card. When we were going through this before the start of this match report, you said that this one, like the Arsenal, um, yeah, again, yellow card was soft. Again. Uh... I think it's Etienne Capou. Yeah, he's unlucky here. Like, <laughs> he just lost his footing. That's it's a foul, but it's not a yellow card. Yeah, again, I mean, I think the referee got these two yellow, these two second yellow card decisions wrong last night. Yeah. And these, obviously, the two uh, players that were sent off won't feature in the second, in the second leg, leg of uh, yeah. of this semi final. Now, one I of mean, the big... for Arsenal, that's I think most Arsenal fans would think that's a good thing. Well, that the bias isn't play yeah. that you can't get picked. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> one of the big talking points, obviously, coming into this match was the fact that you would be playing against your old manager Unai Emery, who famously took over after an Arsene Wenger's reign. Um, we haven't actually spoken about this off the podcast. What were your views of Unai Emery? First of all, when he came into the club, did you think he was the right man? Were you overjoyed by that? Were you a Wenger out Arsenal supporter? And also, when he did leave, did you think that, were you uh, Emery out? Did you have the Emery out view? And what do you think about that now? Um, sadly, I was a Wenger ving- out. You were a Wenger yeah, out? Yeah, a Wenger out, I was. Um, I think he'd come to the end of his time. You know, Fair his enough. football, his, I didn't think his tactics was working anymore. And the club needed to progress. But when Unai came in as well, for the first season... We played really good attacking football, but also we conceded a lot of goals. And then in his second season, when we stopped scoring goals and, kept and still conceding himself. goals, that, I think that's what led to his downfall. And maybe he wasn't given a backing to get in good centre backs because it was only this season that the Arsenal board finally gave some backing, and we've got. What do you mean, you had Mustafi? What more? Could oh. you <laughs> that rock, rock of a defender. Um, but yeah, now we've got. I think we've sorted our centre back. It's just that now we can't. We're not playing that attacking football. Aubameyang has not been in form, you know. So, I think Emery was not unlucky, but he should have been given a lot more time. But also, the fans were very unhappy, and the results were not coming in. Unfortunately, mm. we. Now you've obviously got Mikel Arteta. You've been through. We're talking about those three 
managers that we've talked about so far. You said mm-hmm. you were Wenger out. Were you Emery out at the time? If you can remember. I can't remember, actually. I mean, I must have been because I think we'd lost... A certain number of games, so, yeah. yeah. It was it was a... I think it was a Christmas, around about... It was after Christmas that you came in that, I, that we switched our tattoo, but yeah. Um, that was always going to happen with the defence that we had at the time. You know, we had we played really good attacking football, but going the other way, defending, we were shocking. Mm. You know? yeah. I think, if memory serves, you know, Emery left just after your 3-0 loss to Chelsea in the Europa League final. What does that say about Arteta, then, if... If Unai Emery w- was forced out due to his loss in the final against Chelsea, what does that say about Arteta if he can't mm. even get to the final against no. a team like Villarreal? I don't think, I don't think he was sacked off. No, I think it was six months into this into that season after that final. Okay. Yeah, that he came in, but I guess. Well, again, then he wasn't even sacked. Was... If if, Uma, if Unai Emery could get to the final and uh, against a team like Chelsea, who. By all accounts, it, it, some would say it's a better team than Villa were out, especially at the time. Yeah, but also in that season, Arsenal had one of the easiest routes to the final. Yeah. Okay. So that wouldn't have stopped you celebrating if you. If you were... no, 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 it would not have stopped us. But you know, it's it's kind of understanding, like you know, yes, he got us to the final, but it was also a very easy route to the final. Okay. And the following season, he just wasn't getting the results that that we wanted and you know Arsenal I'll say I've been constantly saying this Arsenal is in a rebuilding stage now We and how long board, have you been in the rebuilding stage on our board well ever since Wenger left but how long have Man United been in a rebuilding stage how I think that they're starting to Liverpool come to the peak been, of that build at the moment yeah but how long have they longer than Arsenal have they won a title yet or have they have they won a Europa League I mean, they get Arsenal still getting trophies in this rebuilding stage. Mm-hmm. You know, you have when Liverpool were in their rebuilding stage, they still weren't winning trophies. Okay, still got a long way to go. Still- and I don't know if Arteta is the man as well. You know, this season the players haven't turned up for him. That's one. But at the same time, his tactics have been a bit shady at times. You mm-hmm. know, like early on the season, insisting on playing Willie Yan. Even though, you know, everyone can see, everyone but him can see that Willian wasn't good enough to be playing in the team. Would you would you take Unai Emery or Arsene Wenger over, uh, over uh, Mikael Teta to manage the second leg? <laughs> <sighs> no, I wouldn't, neither of them. See, Arteta set up Arsenal now that we don't concede that many goals anymore, you know. And... If you want someone to take like take a team and take them to like a one nil, or to those three managers take them to a one nil victory, I think it'll be Arteta. No, and I'm sure Wenger's done it loads of time, but right now, you're yeah, taking. Yeah, I'll, I'll take. Okay, well as you say, Arsenal's got a long rebuilding process in the way. One of the first obstacles of that will be the second leg. What are your predictions for that game? First of all, as an Arsenal fan, second of all, as a uh, regular thinking human being. Mm, I think he'll be 2 1 Arsenal. 2 1 Arsenal, so you yeah, think it's going to go to a penalty extra, shootout? Yeah, extra and, time. Extra, extra, what, it's not going to go to a penalty. 2 1 Arsenal next uh, second half is like extra time. Who? Sorry, what, who's going to get? So it's going to be 2 1 overall, yeah. goes to extra time. And what's second happening? half of extra time, Arsenal. Arsenal, I'm going to ask yeah. Well, that's a very, that's a very, very specific. specific yeah. You made it more difficult <laughs> to yourself by predicting that, but fair enough. So, yeah, thank you for uh, listening to this match report. Uh, it is part of our podcast, which is Where's the Bandwagon? Um, I hope you found it entertaining. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe and rate our podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever it is that you're listening to us, as it really helps get uh, some traction to our young podcast. Now, we will be doing some more match reports uh, in the future, uh, but coming up, if you're a fan of our football podcast, we're just about to record our Euro uh, England Euro 2021 squad. Ty's gone and picked them, and we're going to go through them um in our main podcast so go and check the links out in the description for the main podcast I'm pretty sure we... it'll just be the same Gary's gonna watch 
or a podcast Gareth's and going to watch choose well, that team well no one else is watching it at the moment so <laughs> hopefully Gareth watches it <laughs> uh, you can follow us uh, and contact us on our social media accounts at Twitter we're at underscore bandwagon on Instagram we're where the where, where's, where, on Instagram we're where's the bandwagon uh, and also I upload clips of our podcast to our YouTube channel so you can check that out and subscribe and all that lovely stuff so catch you next time see you later bye cheers bye